Hello, Integrated Math One. Welcome to lesson 1.2.3a. We're going to take a couple days on this lesson as well, just like we did on the last one. We're going to take a few days because there's a lot of big, important information here that we need. So to get this started, we are going to go ahead and begin just with a lovely little warm-up here on page 1, M1-131 in your workbook. The local bank has agreed to donate $250 to the annual turkey fund to help feed families in need. In addition, for every bank customer that donates $50, the bank will donate $25. Um, a sequence describes the relationship between the number of $50 donations and the amount of the bank's donations. So I just have a few little questions for you. First of all, is the sequence arithmetic or geometric? Question one. And question 10, I'm not asking you to actually find it, but how would you calculate the 10th term based on the ninth term? We're not doing question number three, by the way. We're just going to stick with one and two for now. So go ahead and hit pause, answer these questions, and then hit play to keep going. So if the bank is donating $25 every time a customer donates $50, then they're adding 25 each time, right? We're not multiplying. We're definitely not subtracting or dividing here. So because it sounds like we're adding $25 each time, that would definitely make this an arithmetic function. So how can you calculate the 10th term based on the ninth term? Well, if I knew what the ninth term was, I would just add 25 to that ninth term. So nothing really amazing or shocking here, but it's important that we start thinking about these. How can you find these terms? Because we're going to start discussing recursive and explicit expressions and formulas. We're going to start digging into that a little bit. So our learning goals throughout these coming days, we're going to write recursive formulas for arithmetic and geometric sequences from contexts. We're going to write explicit expressions from error for arithmetic and geometric sequences from contacts. I love the explicit expressions. You'll see. You'll see as we go why this is pretty dang magical. And of course, we're also going to use formulas to determine unknown terms of a sequence. So if I don't know what that term is, we're going to actually be able to use formulas to help us get there. So cool. So our key terms are going to be recursive formula and explicit formula. Not really any surprises there. So you've learned that arithmetic and geometric sequences always describe functions. And in fact, last time we realized that arithmetic sequences describe linear functions and geometric sequences describe exponential functions. So how can you write equations to represent these functions, right? Last unit, we wrote equations of exponential functions. We wrote equations for our linear functions. So how can we do that with our arithmetic and geometric sequences? We know they're there, we just gotta figure out how to make it happen. So let's go to our getting started activity on page M1-132. Um, can I get a formula? So while a common ratio or common difference can help you determine the next term in a sequence, how could they help you determine the thousandth term of a sequence? or the 10,000th term of a sequence, right? It's, it's pretty easy to use your common ratio or common difference to find the next term, but if you want to find the thousandth term, I don't want to make a table that big. <laughs> like, I don't want to make a table that big. I don't want to make a table that big. So we need to find a way to get there. So we're going to have a little scenario to kind of help us get there. We're going to consider the sequence represented in the situation. Rico owns a sporting goods store. He has agreed to donate $125 to the Centipede Valley High School baseball team for the equipment fund. In addition, he will donate $18 for every home run the Centipedes hit during the season. The sequence shown right here, there it is, represents the possible dollar amounts that Rico could donate for the season. So even if they don't make any home runs, he'll give them $125 for their equipment fund. But for each home run after that, each home run they get, he'll add on another $18. So guys, what type of sequence is this? Is this arithmetic? Is this geometric? How do you know that? Hit pause, write it down, hit play to keep going.
I hope you realize pretty quickly this sequence is arithmetic. Of course it's arithmetic. We're adding a constant to each term, right? We're adding 18 every time. That's totally an arithmetic sequence. So now that you know that it's an arithmetic sequence, can you determine the common difference? It's not a common ratio. We said it's arithmetic, so I'm like, that means it's a common difference. It's not a common ratio. Boo. So now that we know that it's arithmetic, can you real quick determine the common difference for the sequence? Go ahead and hit pause, write it down, hit play to keep going. Hopefully you realize since he's adding $18 for every home run, that means our common difference is 18. You also could have written D equals 18. So if you wrote that, that also would have been okay. I used words, but this works too. And then can you go ahead and complete the table? Um, so we said, um, I'll get you started. We said even if there were no home runs, that's going to be our first term, which is $125. Can you go ahead and complete the rest of this table? Go ahead and hit pause, fill in the table, and then hit play to check your work. So I kept going. Um, some of it was already here, so the second term, oops, <laughs> let me erase my... Here is that. So my second term was 143, my third term was 161, my fourth term was 179, and then I just kept adding 18. So my fifth term was 197, my sixth term was 215, seventh term was 233. This is also why I'm using a calculator. <laughs> my eighth term then was 251, my ninth term was 269, and my 10th term was 287. Now, I also want to point out something really important here. Did you notice that the number of home runs was one less than the term number? Did you catch that? That five home runs was actually term number six. Did you catch that? It's important. Um, so question four, explain how you could calculate the 10th term based on the 9th term. So how would you calculate the 10th term given the 9th term? Go ahead and hit pause, write it down, hit play to check your work. You probably already realized from the warm-up where this is going. If I wanted to calculate the 10th term, you would just add 18 to the 9th term, right? No big deal. This brings us over to the next page, to page 133, and this takes us to what we call the recursive formula. A recursive formula expresses each new term of a sequence based on the preceding term in the sequence. So we can find each term based on the term right before it, all right? The recursive formula to determine the nth term of, a se of an arithmetic sequence is as follows. Um, so please notice, when I say a sub n, that's the nth term. So if I was so n, and maybe we'll even write this in here, that's our term number, okay? So if I wanted to find the 10th term, I would say this is a sub 10. Now please notice this is a sub n minus 1 because it's the previous term. Are you catching that? It's the one right before. So if I wanted to find the 10th term, I would need to plug in the ninth term, the one right before. And you're probably not surprised to discover that D stands for the common difference. So the cool thing about the recursive formula is you only need to know the previous term and the common difference. If you know the previous term and the common difference, you can find the next term, right? No big deal. To give you an idea of that, consider the sequence negative 2, negative 9, negative 16, negative 23, and so on and so on. So you can use the recursive formula to determine the fifth term. So if I want to find the fifth term, I'm looking for a sub 5. That means we're going to need, it's going to be equal to a sub 5 minus 1, we'll talk about that in a minute, plus my common difference, which in this case it looks like we're subtracting 7 every time. So that means my common difference is a negative 7. Um, so the expression a sub 5 represents the fifth term, and that means the previous term is negative 23, and the common difference is negative 7. So just, just to clarify the way this is written, you know that 5 minus 1 is 4. So this means if I want the fifth term, I need the fourth term, and I need that common difference. We know what the fourth term is. It's negative 23. 
negative 23 plus a negative 7 gives us negative 30. So the fifth term of the sequence is negative 30. Now, you probably didn't need a formula for that, right? I mean, did you actually need a formula to find the fifth term? I don't think you did. But that is the official recursive formula. So recursive formula just helps us find the next term is really all it's doing. So consider that sequence um, showing Rico's contribution to the Centipede's baseball team in terms of the number of home runs hit. So if we bring it back, we bring it back. Let's use a recursive formula to determine the 11th term in the sequence and explain what this value means in terms of this problem situation. So go ahead and hit pause and use the recursive formula to help you find the 11th term and then hit play to keep the discussion going. So here's our recursive formula. I want to find the 11th term, so I'm going to call that a sub 11. So that means I need the term right before it, a sub 10, and then of course my common difference from Rico's stuff earlier is 18. Great. So I know what the 10th term is, right? It's on our table. If you flip back, you look at our table, you'll find that term number 10 was 287. So I will add 18 to find term number 11, which is 305. Um, so I just want to take it back a little bit to our table. So except to explain the value of the term, what does it mean? Okay, in terms of Rico's contribution, this means that Rico will donate a total of $305 if 10 home runs are hit. Please remember our term number is off of our home runs by just a little bit. So how would you calculate the 20th term? Is there a way to calculate the 20th term without first calculating the 19th term? And if so, do you have some kind of strategy? Go ahead and just jot down your thoughts. I'm not asking you to actually find the 20th term, but I'm asking you to think about how you might be able to find the 20th term without making a whole table all the way down to the 19th to keep going. Go ahead and hit pause. Write down your thoughts on this and then hit play to keep going. So you may have written down a couple of different thoughts on this. Maybe you were like, I could figure out how many times I have to add on and I can multiply by 18. There's all kinds of ways you can do this. But one of the best ways, one of the best ways, you can determine the 93rd term of a sequence by calculating each term before it, right? You could do that. You could calculate each term before it and then add 18 to the 92nd term. But that would take so long. Right? Even just finding the 20th term would take a long time. If I wanted to find the 93rd term, oh my gosh, that would take, that would be such a big table. A more efficient way to calculate any term of a sequence is to use what we call an explicit formula. I love the explicit formula because it allows me to calculate any term of the sequence. I can literally calculate any term in the sequence that I want to find. And it's so awesome because I don't have to make this massive table to find the 93rd term. I don't have to do any of that. The explicit term, sorry, my light keeps going out. Come back on. I came back. An explicit formula of a sequence is a formula to calculate the nth term of a sequence using the term's position in the sequence. So what the idea is, if I know where the term is, I can use this formula to figure out how much that term is. The explicit formula for determining the nth term of an arithmetic sequence is this little guy right here. So we still have a sub n. And remember, we wrote this down earlier, n is the term number, okay, okay, okay. Please remember that n is the term number. But look at this now. My formula has changed. I love the explicit formula. If you forget the recursive formula, nobody will be upset. Memorize your explicit formula. You'll be happy you did. So a sub n, my term that I'm looking for, equals a sub 1, which is my very first term, plus d, my common difference, times n minus 1. Don't forget that n stands for 
the term number that you're looking for, okay? Okay? Now, please notice you have n minus 1 in here. Please remember your order of operations. You have to subtract first, okay? Don't forget these things. So, so let me come on over here. I have a worked out example. I have a worked out example on page 135, 134. Just kidding. <laughs> so you can use the explicit formula to determine the 93rd term in this problem situation. So here's our formula. We said n is the term number, so a sub 93, because I want the 93rd term. I'm like, hey, there's my n. The first term, remember that this is our first term, and in this case, my first term was 125, because he was going to donate $125 anyway, plus my common difference, oops, come on back, my common difference, which we said was 18, and then, of course, n minus 1. Well, we just said that n was 93, right? We just said that, so that's going to go in there. So the expression a sub 93 represents the 93rd term. The first term is 125, the common difference is 18. And now you can just work it out. Um, parentheses first with your order of operations, so 93 minus 1 is 92. Also order of operations says that you need to multiply, oh I'm hitting buttons, sorry. It says you need to multiply next, which gives you 1656, and then we'll add on that initial amount, and it turns out the 93rd term of the sequence is 1,781. So this means RICO will contribute a total of $1,781 if the centipedes hit 92 home runs. That's a lot of home runs, but I, I mean, they, they got a whole season. It could happen. So now that you have an idea of how this explicit formula works, go ahead and do number three. You've got a couple of them here. You've got part A, part B. You've got a couple of these here. I would like you to use the explicit formula to the, determine the amount of money Rico will contribute for each number of home runs hit. And be careful. Remember that a certain number of home runs is a slightly different term number that you're looking for. Can you remember that? Go ahead and hit pause to work your way through these on number three on page 135 and then hit play to check your work. So uh, 35 home runs. Well, remembering how my table was, remember that the first term was zero home runs, right? And so the, first, the second term was one home run and on and on and on. So that means 35 home runs is actually the 36th term, okay? So since it's the 36th term, I know that n is 36. I already know my first term is 125 because we found that earlier. We knew that. And of course, my common difference is 18. That's how much he's adding every time. So I'm going to plug these into my formula. So that means this is going to be a sub 36 equals 125, my first term, plus 18, my common difference, times the difference of 36 and 1. Because again, 36 term is what we're looking for here. I hope you caught that. I hope you caught that. And then I just got to do the work, right? 36 minus 1 is 35. No problem. I definitely used a calculator to figure out that 18 times 35 is 630. I added that to my $125, and it turns out, whoops, Come back. Turns out that if 35 home runs are hit, Rico will contribute $755 to their equipment fund. Did you work this one out as well? Part B, 48 home runs. Did you? Did you? So for 48 home runs, that means we're looking for term 49. We're looking for the 49th term. So 49 is going to be my N. So if I'm using my formula, again, my First term was 125. My common difference is still 18. None of that has changed. So I'm going to plug all of those into my formula. Yay. Yay. So a sub 49 equals 125 plus 18 times 49 minus 1. So I'll subtract first to get 48. Use my calculator to multiply and get 864. And then, of course, add 125. So it looks like if there are 48 home runs, 
Rico will donate $989. What about 86 home runs? You know what's happening here, right? 86 home runs is the 87th term. So there's your N. There's your N right there. If I'm looking for the 87th term, and I still know my first term is 125. My common difference is still 18. None of that has changed. I'm just now going to do 87 minus 1 over here because I want the 87th term. 87 minus 1 is, of course, 86 times 18 is 1,548. And if you add 25, you get 1,673. I got another. I got another. Did you do them all? Come on. D, 214 home runs, means it's the 215th term. So N is going to be 215, and I'll plug in all the others. My first term, my common difference, the term number. Subtract 1, I get 214. Multiply, I get 3,852. And if I add, I get 3,977. That was the last one though, right? We got there. We're good. So hopefully you're getting an idea of how cool this explicit formula is, right? This explicit formula is freaking awesome. I love it, I love it, I love it. This lovely explicit formula, I love it. I love it, I love it. It helps me find any term in my sequence. What's not to love about that? As always, guys, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found this useful. If you got questions or concerns, you're welcome to email me. Come see me during office hours. Come talk to me. I'll help you out. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.